Welcome back, this is Try and Weir 412, looking again at the game of Diplomacy. This time, instead of looking at the basic rules, we're going to look at one of the games that I've played that has uh, been completed, and we'll just uh, comment on it and see how things went for myself, for the other players, what went wrong, what went right, and look again at some more of the advanced things in the game. So here's the first moves in the game. I started off as Italy. You see me down here. And Italy's not a country that I am terribly fond of playing. I find them to be extremely difficult. So let's just take a look at some of the other things that are going on. You see over here a standoff or a bounce between Turkey and Russia. A new player might look at that and think, oh, Turkey and Russia are at odds, they're fighting. But this is actually fairly standard whether Turkey or Russia are friends or not. Um, neither one of them wants the other country to have control of the Black Sea, and so the best option is for both of them to order a unit there to create a standoff. Now over here you see a fairly uh, fairly weak opening from Austria-Hungary holding two units and moving down into Serbia with the other, and in fact you'll see in the next turn he undoes that move to Serbia and really kind of messes himself up from the get-go. Um, here I attack Serb or Austria, but this was agreed upon. I knew his unit was not moving, and he knew I was going to be ordering a unit there. It just serves to create the illusion of a fight, kind of like this move over here does. In the west, we see some pretty standard openings as well. France is making a run to pick up three builds. You see he moves to Spain, moves a fleet to get in range of Portugal, and also moves this army up to threaten Belgium. So he stands the chance of doubling. England has moved away from France. This is also a pretty standard agreement. Neither one of them moves into the English Channel. Uh, so nothing really exciting to report there. And nothing terribly exciting either from Germany. The only interesting thing is he moved Berlin here down to Munich. I typically would move it over to Kiel, but we'll see what he was hoping to accomplish there. So the next turn again, I move an army to Trieste. Again, that was agreed upon. He knew I was going to do it. And you see here, he's so afraid that Russia is going to attack him that he supports himself back into Budapest, which means he will not take Serbia. So Austria goes an entire year without gaining anything. Uh, Turkey moves through and will pick up two. Russia is able to pick up one here. Russia also, because of his move uh, in the last turn, moving Moscow up to St. Petersburg, he scared England into committing all of his forces to taking Norway. Um, so that was kind of a sneaky move on his part. Down here you see Germany picking a fight with Russia by standing him off in Sweden and also by moving his army back towards this exposed Russian center. Uh, he moves up and takes Holland. Down here we have France picking up Portugal and Spain like I thought they would, but instead of taking Picardy, France moves away from it down into Burgundy. So that was a little interesting, uh, not terribly exciting but different. And I pick up one build by jumping down to Tunis. Now that's a pretty standard build for Italy. No one gets Tunis but Italy. They're not very exciting. They don't have a lot of options. I don't like playing them. So I was going to try something new and exciting by building a fleet here and that's not new or exciting but instead of using it to attack Austria or Turkey I intended to move up against France and so we'll look at that how that worked in a moment. Now the build here of a fleet in the south is a pretty good indicator that Russia and Turkey are working together. If they were enemies, Turkey would want that fleet up here. And Russia doesn't build in Sevastopol. He builds way up in Moscow, so that's another good hint. Uh, Germany's building on his eastern side, probably a sign that he's going to move towards Russia. And England builds a fleet in London. Uh, nothing terribly exciting either way about that. Don't have much to say about France, I guess, looking at it now. Uh, his fleet in the north shows that he's 
trusting of me. Uh, he didn't build in Marseille, so that's something worth noting, I guess. Here we see a few interesting things. Now I move up against France. I jump over from Venice to Piedmont and move my fleets both in that direction so that I can threaten Marseille in the next turn. Here you see the German unit offering support to England, but England doesn't actually take it. So that's pretty interesting. So we've got the attack going here. We have Turkey making a strong push west, Russia attempting to push west, and also now you notice Russia working with England, supporting English units, and England forcing his way west as well instead of moving his way east. I think I started to say you see the German unit offering support for a move to Belgium from the North Sea, but that move is never ordered. England instead attacks France. Now that's strange, and I found it strange as I was playing. Normally when Turkey and Russia are this obviously allied, everybody else fights against them, because this is a very difficult alliance to stop, it's a very difficult alliance to break. Normally you don't want to help them, you want to stop them. But England decided apparently that working with Russia would be a good idea, and so that is what it is, I guess. I was so proud of myself for this attack as Italy because I have seen players have bad luck and I have had bad luck with Italy only getting these four centers and never expanding beyond that so I had played my cards right and I hit Marseille I did a double convoy both of these fleets convoying Tunis up to Marseille and supporting from Piedmont I took the center and wouldn't you know it the Austrian player who failed to gain any builds in the first year decides to sneak in to Venice and take that away from me. I was fairly livid, was unhappy. Uh, you see Turkey continues to push east. Uh, Germany is falling back against the combined might of Russia and England. And France is having a hard time uh, with me pushing up in the south and England applying pressure in the north. So that year was a little more exciting than the first uh, with England taking a big chunk of Scandinavia, uh, Germany falling back there, Austria pushing into Italy but Italy myself pushing into France and then Turkey and Russia both making pretty sizable advances so you see here the builds so that kind of sets the stage, that's the beginning of the conflict, and we will pick it up in the spring of 1903, the next time I make a video. We will see you then.